Good morning, YouTube. It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here with another review. This is for Love and Marriage DC. Um, as you guys know, I had taken a very long hiatus from reality TV. I just was feeling very, very um, bamboozled. Um, I really just did not like the way that things were being done in the reality TV realm. Um, and so I took a little bit of a break and I'm only just now starting to warm back up to it. And no one could do that but Monique Samuels. You guys remember Monique Samuels from, um, Potomac. Is it Real Housewives of Potomac? Yeah, I guess that's what it's called. I don't know why I didn't remember that. I think because of um, Married to Medicine is a Bravo show, but it's not a part of it. Anyway, Real Housewives of Potomac. Um, she was on there and there was this big thing or whatever. And um, obviously I'm team Monique. Um, Monique chose to choose her family and her own peace of mind over um, continuing to be uh fodder for bravo and bravo andy <laughs> i don't know about the andy part but definitely bravo um and she just decided to go her own way so this is our first time seeing monique since that on tv she has of course been extremely present on social media um she's a very responsive um, celebrity. So typically if you, you know, um, at her, she tends to like or respond. Like she's a super approachable person. She also has a show here on YouTube, um, um, which is a podcast. Um, so we've seen her there as well. But now we get to see her back on TV and she has joined the wildly successful Love and Marriage franchise, um, which I think is produced by Carlos King, who, by the way, is a former um, producer over at Bravo. So he's a Bravo, he's Bravo alumni, I guess you could say. Um... So, yeah, so he's on OWN. This, this this show is on OWN. And, um, and you know, people love Love and Marriage Huntsville. Everyone's always asking me, do you watch Love and Marriage Huntsville? Do you watch Love and Marriage Huntsville? I do not. I don't watch it and I don't review it. Um, I just never really got into it. You know, I regret it now because... You know, it has really taken off. But I'm super excited about Love and Marriage DC. This is something I can call my own. First of all, I love Monique Samuels. If you have not guessed by now, I heard um, a YouTuber say that Monique didn't have a personality. I was like, <laughs> are you asleep? Are you asleep when she's on? Because that may be where the disconnect is. Um, yeah. She's she's got a really, really great personality. Super bubbly. Um, anyway, the show is about the Samuels, Monique and Chris. Um, they're our middle couple. Beautiful, gorgeous. I love the natural hair that Monique is rocking. She has been rocking over the last um, few months or so. Really, 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 really beautiful. Um, so versatile, so gorgeous. Um, we also have two other couples. Um, so we have Monique and Chris. We have Ashley and um, DJ Silva. Um, we also have Elena and her husband, Jamie. Um, Ashley, Monique, and um, Irena, all are boss ladies. They have their own business. Um, Monique and Ashley specifically have 
um, mom-centered podcast. Monique has the Not For Lazy Mom, and which she's had since the Potomac days. Um, and um, Ashley's website is called... Um, it's that play on moms too. It's something about... Um, I can't remember. I can't remember Ashley's um, website. I thought I wrote it down. Her podcast about uh, moms, but it's it's a it's something. It, it's um, it's 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 weird. It's something like Boogie Moms or I can't I can't remember. It's it, anyway neither here nor there and um all three of them uh have businesses um several businesses each um but i thought that was interesting that monique and ashley both had um mom their moms of younger children they both have a uh, mom podcast which uh yeah i think it's pretty cool um so, and we also have Winter. Winter is um, like a friend of the show. She was brought in by Monique. Um, and she has really gone through a lot. She's been married now twice. And her second marriage seems to be having some difficulties. So we're going to get to see that play out. Um, it's an odd thing. And I, this is why I say this is a show I can call my own. Because... I am unmarried and um, most of my friends are married or have been married um, during our time as friends. And so I can relate to what it's like to be someone who is um, in, you know, in a relationship maybe, but not married or depending on where I am in life, I may be single you know, and you still have these married friends and it can be this sort of really tenuous type situation if you're not careful. So I, I'm excited about seeing how it's all going to play out in this season. This first episode, although I felt like it was a little bit short, it was really good. It started um, with a bang. We get to see Monique just slaying like she normally does. Her confessional look, you guys, that pale pink is gorgeous, okay? That choker that has a chain that leads to this flowered, like, it is just, ugh. I was like, Monique, Monique, Monique. See, this is why Giselle couldn't stand you the moment she met you, girl, because you be on it, right? She's got a pop-up shop. And she's invited the ladies um, down to this pop-up shop. But, you know, Monique never misses an opportunity to empower, to network, to expand, to market, um, and just be really all around. Just a very well-rounded business person. And and um, I keep saying celebrity I guess I don't I don't really want to call her a celebrity per se because to me she's she's so approachable. It's hard to call her a celebrity. I will say influencer, um, motivator, you know, encourager. She's that type of personality, right? So um, she's not going to just have a pop up shop. She's also going to have winter speaking. Uh, the ladies are there. There's libations. She is got um, her Mila um oils essential oils there um that's one of the things that she's selling um and the diffusers i mean she's got a really great product from what i understand and this is one of the things i could really really appreciate about monique monique is authentic that's one of the reasons why i like her she's super authentic she started these businesses while she was um on Potomac as far as I know or she announced it while she was on Potomac early on 
when she first got on, these things were birthed in her. And she has been so consistently um, building her brand, building her business. It, it's not like, oh, I'm going to get this fake business for TV so people think I'm doing something other than just being a housewife. Um, when we met Monique, Monique was uh, managing uh, properties that she and Chris own. Um, she's just a, she's just a very, very professional, um, individual when she puts her mind to something, she's got a lot of tenacity and, um, follow through. Um, she likes things to be done a certain way. That event, that pop-up shop event was gorgeous. It was beautifully done. Um, she pulled up in a Bentley baby with a, with a, a fur and that hair, you know, put up with the beautiful tendrils, you know, um, framing her face. Um, just, just gorgeous, gorgeous woman. And she was busy, baby. She was putting them scents in the air. She was lighting those, those diffusers up. I mean, talking to staff, selling the products. I mean, just she was working that event. She was working that event. You can tell it was functional. It was a functional event. It was not something that was put on just so we can film. You know what I'm saying? Like with strays walking around, like people had bags, they were purchasing things, you know? And then she comes to the portion of the, of the, um, the event where they're going to have some encouraging words. And so uh, everybody gathers to hear the speaker and Monique is on stage and um, she gets to announce winter through this whole process. We're getting to know Ashley and Arena. Now, um, they had their little moment there where Ashley uh, was one of the first to arrive. And so she started drinking, you know, she started having a drink when she first got there. I mean, she wasn't drunk, drunk. She was just getting to that place where her whisper was broken a little bit. And um, she was being kind of, you know, mildly inappropriate with the girls. This is just with the girls, but it was also on camera and was also in public. So that's why I just brought that up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like she said, like, that was her fourth glass. That might be your limit, boo. That might be your limit. Going forward, do you one, do you two? And on that third one, I'm going to need you to sip slowly. Babysit the cup. Okay. Sip slowly. Babysit the cup, right? All right, okay. And that third one, just go ahead and start hitting your ice water. Just start hitting your ice water, girl, and bring it down a little bit because you don't want to be out here like, mm. um. Ashley seems like she's going to be a little bit of a mean girl. She says she's a boss lady and, um, um, and also a bee. I don't know. So she, she obviously knows that she has, um, a little bit of a past when it comes to being a bee, a little bit of a, a reputation. I'm sure she's been told it before. Uh, she's not just tooting her own horn. She's probably got references. So, uh, we get to see her there and, um, Arena. I, I had no idea that. I, looking at Arena and looking at Ashley, they really look a lot alike. They all, they have those um, wand curls, you know, down to here, you know, like the 24 inch weave um, part in the middle, you know, uh, same skin tone, same face. They both kind of got that same draw, that drag in their voice, you know, that that um dc virginia <laughs> you know where they kind of country but not country because it's the city but it's country like y'all know what i'm talking about y'all know what i'm talking about you know what i'm saying that little bit of draw think about stanley and lynette you know how lynette got a little bit of a southern draw these ladies got a little bit of a, a southern draw and i think stanley and lynette are in virginia so y'all get what I'm saying, right? Especially Arena. Arena, 
has got, I kept saying, where's she from? Louisiana, Mississippi? <laughs> and then I remembered, no, they talk just as country <laughs> as we do. Okay. Um, so we get to see them interact a little bit. We get to see, you know, Ashley kind of shade Arena about her age a little bit. It was cute. It was fun. We get to meet Winter. Winter takes the stage and she tells her story. It was so awkward. It was so awkward. Like, I don't know how long the event was, um, but Ashley and, and Irena was mostly Ashley was talking about, she was kind of bored um, so I don't know how long the conversation was, but it was kind of like uh, the conversation was about how her first marriage ended and how, you know, he cheated on her and had babies on her and, um, you know, they kind of spliced in, you know, her, her, her ending, which was if I can come out of it and do it and find myself, you can too. Um, it looked like it was going to be this great conversation, I don't know particularly what it is that Winter does per se, but I think she's like relationship or I'm not sure. I'm not sure. She's she's somewhere in there, like motivational, relational, something like that. Um, she's got like one quarter of her head shaved. So if your head is in fourths, she's got one fourth of her head completely bald you know it looks like it's kind of trying to grow back in and then the rest just regular she just zoop cut out that little slice of pie um and i think arena had a very good point usually when you see someone make drastic changes like that they're going through something um they're either breaking through or they're you know trying to break through by you know shaking things up a little bit right so i thought that was a really great point from Irena. um but yeah i still got my eh, 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 eh. i still am feeling a certain type of way about Irena, and we're gonna talk about it so we go to each individual home Irena and jamie um they have two sons one is 25 and i'm not sure how old the, the one that's still in home at inside the home he is um handy capable he is legally blind um her mom lives there with them as well and her husband jamie who owns j and j um promotions he throws parties um, it was just weird. Like I just, you throw parties, some of the most fabulous parties all over the United States, maybe even the world. He was like, if you ever been to a J and J party, you know, a J and J party. Um, but y'all anniversary party was womp womp. Now maybe it was fabulous, but you need to talk to, Carlos about it, it promoting, you know, through the visuals. If you're going to say I am a promoter and I throw fabulous parties, your anniversary party should have been lit, lit, like lit, lit. And one of the things I noticed um, in, in white franchises, they spend a lot of time showing you the fabulousness. Um, and so I just wonder why they don't do it on some of the black franchises, like show us some, some lusciousness. I really thought the, um, homes showing the homes, the different rooms in the homes was really, really beautiful. The outside of the homes were really, really nice, but you are a party promoter. Where is the fanfare? Where's the flash? Where's the seating? Where's the table covering? Like it looked like y'all um, rented a space at a restaurant and let them know y'all was going to have 60 people. And they was like, okay, you can have the upper deck area, right? And, you know... <clears throat> I was like, where the food at? Where the bar at? Where, like, like, let's see. Let's what we, what are we getting? It was, it was just so regular. Like I've been to those parties up the street, 
You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't special. Like, he had somebody walk through with a sign, and they was like, oh, happy 26th. And then they had the bottles pop, like what you do at the club. I was like, what is this? What is this? What a buffet. Let me see what the buffet. Let me see what's on that buffet, okay? Why these tables not covered? Where your high boy covers at? Y'all, your high boys don't have no covers on them? Like, what is we doing? Where your, where your bartender? Where your, where your beautiful people at? Little details. It's little, 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 little details that make um, things special. This just was not special. It was not special. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, I did not like the way Irena was talking to her mom. I didn't like the way she was handling her mom. Her mom is in her twilight years. And, um, y'all that fabulous. You got that much money. You need to hire somebody to come in. Okay. And manage your home. Okay. And get your mama off her feet. Get your mama out that kitchen. I don't like that. I don't like that. You're so fabulous. You're so fabulous. You got several businesses. You pull up in a Range Rover. Uh, Monique was talking about their Twitter page. You know what I'm saying? And you got your mama cooking. You asked your mama how long on dinner. Girl, if you don't get somebody in there to cook and let your mama manage them. Let your mama keep an eye on them. You need to get your somebody to help your mama out around that house with your baby too. I don't like that. I don't like that. Now, I don't know if you got somebody and they just not showing that person, but you need somebody in their house helping your mama out. Now, you 48. So, I know your mama up there. And you got her working in this house like she worked for you. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You bring somebody in there that you pay and get your mama off her feet. Especially since she's taking care of your son. Girl. Anyway, the other son is 25. Um, they trying to make it seem like he had a real bad weed problem. But it seemed like to me that weed is not necessarily the issue. Now, let me say this. You can do too much of anything. Um, drinking will uh, rob you of your dignity. And too much marijuana will rob you of your ambition right everything in this world is about balance okay too much of anything air water food pooping one of the greatest things you could do for your body but you can do it too much you can urinate too much dehydrate it yeah you can do too much of anything but this is about a storyline it's also about the fact that he and his dad bump heads and they bump heads because the son, who is a junior, Jamie Jr., little Jamie, little Jamie is out here doing what he want to do, right? But mom takes him to look at a car, an Acura, and she tells him she not going to pay for that car. That's on camera. When they was in that car, in the, in the Range Rover driving there, she said, I'm going to buy this car for you, but you better not tell your daddy and you better not speak about it on camera. If you do, I'm going to tell him you a lie. I ain't paid for nothing. Now, if you want me to pay for it, you're going to have to keep it quiet. I could tell by the look on his face when she said, I'm not paying for this car. He was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, you paying for this car? <laughs> oh. oh. Anyway, it's this heartfelt moment where she just talks to him about, they worry about him. They worry about him because basically you out here and you getting into things. You don't come home. We can't, we can't get you on the phone. We don't hear from you. And we're concerned. Your granny is concerned. She thinks about you. She talks about you all the time. She's worried about you, right? Like, even with your dad, he just wants what's best for you. Now, his dad is a bit of a hard arse, you know, uh, his father, you know, yoked him up and got him on what he considered to be straight and narrow. And this is what he also wants to do for little Jamie. And I can tell that little Jamie did it for the TV. I think he did it for his mom. I think he did it for the moment. You 
you can go six months, two years. It still takes a toll on you. I think he wanted to talk to his dad. He wanted to resolve things with his father. His father was still kind of reserved. You know, first the mom was like, Jamie said he coming to the party. Daddy was like, uh, I believe it when I see it. Then they get to the party and they see um, little Jamie come up with his girl. And dad says, okay, I just hope he can behave himself. You know, you know, it's like he, he just won't allow himself. Probably because he's been let down a couple of two, three times. Won't let himself just embrace the fact that his son may be growing and changing. Like, get benefit of the doubt type of thing. So, that may be what's going on there. Um, Jamie and Irena are not my favorite so far. Obviously, it's Monique and Chris. But, um, it's something there. Everybody kept asking them, what's your secret? You guys have been married 26 years. It's your 26th year anniversary. What's your secret? Like, tell us something. Monique wanted a Q&A, but that's just the controlling side of Monique. <laughs> Monique. Monique always needs the instructions. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> She's not one of those people that's going to, you're going to just drop them in the middle of nowhere. Uh... Monique needs instructions. You know what I'm saying? She needs to see the book. She needs to read it front to back. You know what I'm saying? She needs to do her research. She's a she's a type A personality. I, I completely get it. But um, the last thing Arena and Jamie want to do is talk about their relationship. That's the last thing they want to do. They don't want to talk about it. They have no advice to give. You know why? Because they struggling too. And they've been struggling probably for a while. That's why I don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Could you quit bringing up this marriage stuff in the, at my anniversary dinner, please? Feelings. We just here to get drunk and get zooted and get some pictures for TikTok and Instagram. We're not here to bust open Pandora's box, which is full of worms and maggots and secrets and regret. Ashley and Silva. If Silva say I'm hard working, I work hard. All I do is work, 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 work. If he says it one more time, one more time, he's like, I am DJ hard working. Never stop working. All I do is work, 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 Silva. That's his name. Period. She needs to start call start calling him uh work Ilva. DJ work. <laughs> DJ work. DJ work. DJ work, right? Uh she looking for something. She looking for something. She's she she to me she feels lonely. Anytime you see people drink quite a bit like that, um when you get to the party, they already kind of loosey goosey. It's it, you find that in a lot of lonely people. You find people that are lonely. She's got websites. She's got two or three businesses. Um, she's doing things with the kids. She toots her own horn here, um, and and you know they got a son, fourteen. The daughter looks like she's like eight, nine, ten, something like that. And she wants him to be present more. She basically is alone. She does everything on her own with the kids around the house through and through. He did go to the anniversary party, but he came straight from work there, you know, which is great. He's a provider, um, but it's something missing. It's something missing. And your girl is lonely. Your wife is lonely. She's lonely. You know, I don't know how many different ways she could tell you that she's lonely um hopefully looking back on the airing of these these shows uh you will see it dj um monique and chris are not without their troubles um one of the things i think monique can uh do Sometimes that can be a little bit wearing on it. People is that she can be a little bit of a nitpicker, especially with Chris. And I kind of saw it a little bit on Potomac too. Um, 
make no mistake about it. The girl is bad. Make no mistake about that. She is um, a cook. Uh, she puts put her children are, are pulled together beautifully. Um, you know, she even when they had T'Challa, rest in peace, T'Challa. Um, you know, she was taking care of T'Challa and teaching T'Challa to talk and um, still doing Not For Lazy Mom, still doing uh, Mila Essential Oil, still doing Potomac, still doing her, um, her YouTube podcast and producing music videos. It, you know, when you put a person, when a person is the commander of their own ship, in a lot of areas, meaning you are good at a lot of different things, you do tend to be a little bit bossy because you kind of know best. Um, but I think when it comes to Chris, she can be a little bit of a stickler. She can be a little needling, you know, She's not bossy, but she knows what he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> and she doesn't let up. She does not let up. Once she gets going, she goes in. She keeps at it. You know what I'm saying? She keeps at it. Like she goes, he's working out with his trainer and she goes in. She tells him he's got, she's got some packages she's shipping out, you know, for her business. And um, she's letting him know that she needs him to make that run to the to the postal post office, and he's still working out. And so then she starts talking. I tell him he need to work out more. And then you know, and it's like ha ha he he. And the guy's trying to count Chris off, you know, to five. Give me two more. Give me three more. And then she was like, and and and, and then he was talking about his back hurt. And I'm like, mommy, go on, go on. Let the man do his thing, work out. You go on, do what you got to do. You don't have to insert yourself in this. And then he sent you on your way. The reason why he sent you on your way is because you were being a distraction. But you've got to know when to edit. You got to know when to pull up. And it's not something you can just say, okay, you know what? I'm not even gonna, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna not, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna go on. I'm not gonna do it. Just work on editing yourself. You don't have to stop being uniquely you, but you do need to edit, okay? Because you don't want to give somebody so, such a big hunk of who you are that they chunk, choke on it. You know, you want to um, spoon feed people the wonderful the knowledgeable, you know what I'm saying? The encouraging, spoon feed it, spoon feed it. And I know this cause I work on this for myself, editing, just editing your conversation. And YouTube has taught me a lot, jumping on people's panels and talking and talking and talking like y'all talking on the phone. I had to learn that it's not like being on the phone. You have to edit, you have to say what you need to say briefly and just be done with it. If people have questions, then they have questions, but you don't want to just go on. Anyway, I'm working on it, as you can see. <laughs> but they also have some issues in their marriage where um, she wants him to be more open emotionally. And we kind of visited this a little bit on Potomac, but because it wasn't about building that friend, that um, show wasn't about building relationships and um, encouraging marriages and just, you know, solidifying. Your, it wasn't about that. It's just, it's here we get to hear more conversation about what her concerns are with him. Apparently, he goes to a life coach and the life coach had come to this plateau. And she felt like bringing Monique in would help Chris to open up a little bit more. Well, this is the same issue that Monique is having. It's not that he's not there with the kids. It's not that he doesn't help her with the business. It's not that he puts her second and doesn't consider her valuable or needed. It is that emotionally he is 
shut down. He's not open. And it probably comes, he was in the NFL for many, many years. Um, he's one of many children. He came from a, a poorer background. And I only bring that up because a lot of times when you find yourself in a situation where you're one of, of um, um, a group of kids and the, your background wasn't that uh, affluent, you have to deal you know what I'm saying? You have to deal. You have to suck it up. You can't uh, be the squeaky wheel, especially if you're the older sibling or the sibling everybody is depending on. You have to learn how to push those emotions down. Push the, You might be tired. You might be angry. You might be hurt. You might be embarrassed. But because it's not for the good of the group or the situation, you bury it. And so when you then he was in the NFL, Another thing where you, you know, there's no crying in football, so you bury it. And so just like it took him years to bury, 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 bury all of those emotions. And now he's in this place where he can't really articulate it. He's not inarticulate. He is very articulate, but being able to articulate emotionally, completely different, completely different. He probably doesn't want to open that Pandora's box. He's probably afraid and he probably doesn't know how. Doesn't know how. I personally think Chris could benefit from um, uh, a male life coach, a male mentor, someone seasoned. Um, I love the pastor from uh, Married at First Sight. Oh, I almost called his name. I love, um, he's actually one of the counselors there. He, he's, a, he's a great example of what I think a good mentor for Chris could be, right? Um, no shade against the female mentor. I just think that this is something different. This is something different. And you kind of have to um, meet it where it is. She's frustrated because he was supposed to make this list of writing all his feelings out. Um, not just his feelings, but like his goals, like what I always wanted to be and what makes me afraid. And, you know, just just write it all down. And he's just putting it off. It's been a month. She's frustrated. You know, she's got it on her list of things that's supposed to be taken care of. And, and it's the thing she can't check off. Plus, she feels like here we are again. We start the conversation. It seems like we're both on the same page, but then you don't have the follow through. You don't think it's important. And she's sick of it. She's sick of it. And let me tell you why I say she's sick of it. She's sick of it because she's no longer being silent about it. Typically, um, when people not over, when people not there yet, when they not between the rock and the hard place, or uh, uh, tired of being sick and tired, they will let it go, let it go, let it go. Let's move on. They're not trying to save face. These two, they are being very open and honest about the issues that are going on. She has had it. She says, yes, you provide. Yes, you're a great husband. Yes, you're a great dad, um, great provider. But I need you to open up to me emotionally. Okay, I don't need you to be in this box emotionally. Right? I need you to be emotionally available. And I get where Monique is coming from because it just levels up your relationship that much more when both parties feel as though they can be vulnerable and they can be open and honest. I think Chris wants to. I just don't think Chris knows where to start. Um, and I think a male mentor would definitely um, help him with those those things a little bit better. So this is really where the show ended was with Chris and Monique kind of having this little tiff. I didn't want them to have this fight, but 
I it was so much more enjoyable than just the girls constantly going to have drinks and stuff like that. So much better. Um, I'm interested in seeing how um, Winter Williams is going to fit into all of this. Uh, I just want DJ Silva and uh, Jamie. I want y'all to just uh, loosen up just a little bit on them buttons. Them buttons on them, them shirts and them jackets. The way they was pulling, my eye was twitching a little bit because I was like, oh, oh, that, oh, that button, ooh, that button is going to pop any second. So, yeah, y'all need to just, just the little things, little things. Chris, um, at that party with that tie on, I was just like, him and Monique look gorge, but he did not need that tie. He did not need that tie, boo. I was like, what did you sell? The whole life insurance policies? Is you on the digging board? They letting you sit on the pulpit this Sunday? Like, why do you have that tie on? And I ain't like how big that knot was. It was bugging me. It was bothering me. It was bothering me. I didn't like them little tables pulled up to the rounder. I didn't care for that. Like, I didn't understand. Like, who isn't, who's through this party? It wasn't J&J this your part? Anyway, good episode. I think I'm going to enjoy it. It comes on on Saturdays at 9 p.m. So you're going to always get it Sunday morning. Trust me. I'm in the bed at 9 p.m. Or um, <laughs> or I need to be in the bed at 9 p.m. Anywho. Um, yeah. So... You guys tell me what you think. Did you watch the episode? Um, please let me know. Do you guys think that Ashley and Arena look a lot alike? Like Ashley was shading Arena for, about her. I don't think she. Maybe she was shading her about her age. But she was going through her marriage. Um, to do the shading. Uh, I was like, but y'all look alike, sis. What what you talking about? Y'all favor. Okay, y'all favor. And if Winter had not shaved off that one-fourth of her head, she would fit right in with them. You know, she would fit in right with them, except they big, tall, Amazonian-type girls. And Winter seems like she's a little bit shorter. Monique is the most unique one out of all of them in terms of looks, in terms of overall texture. She, to me, is... Um, she to me she outshines all of them and she separated herself she set herself apart with her overall look in my opinion did y'all notice that um little jamie had a tattoo in his ear i think that was a tattoo in his ear Ooh, 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 ooh. that's interesting it's interesting it's thrilling and it's scary anyway y'all tell me what y'all think of this episode um yeah, we're going to talk a little bit more. <laughs> I don't want to go in too hard first first review. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit more. Uh, but I would love to know what you guys thought about this episode. I'd love for you to put it down below. Listen, share this video. Share this video. We still got P-Valley coming. We got... Um, uh, more power coming. I'm not going to stop doing these reviews. Of course, we got Queen Sugar, um, the final season coming. Um, and I got a couple of things I'm trying to put together for you guys. I just don't know how to wrap it. I don't know what kind of bowl to wrap it in for you guys. And I'm not sure how to incorporate it into this channel, but we're going to do our best to do it. Um, listen, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Uh, Sunday is Sunday morning. <laughs> Go get your coffee and enjoy this review. And until next time, honeybees, mwah, mwah, mwah. I holler.